Welcome to the Bombshell Business Podcast, where driven women in business learn how to become more bold, brave, and unwaveringly confident. Feel empowered and challenged through inspiring stories and tell it like it is advice for business, life, and leadership. Hey, Bombshell. Welcome back to the Bombshell Business Podcast. I'm your host, Amber Hurdle, and I am very grateful that you have chosen to take your precious time to spend it with me and my guest and really invest in yourself so that you can become a more bold, brave, and unwaveringly confident fempreneur. We have a great episode today. I think it's going to be a hot topic for y'all. It's all about social media and importantly, it's about kind of the behind the scenes of how we do things in Amber Hurdle Consulting. I've got our bombshell business expert, Abby Hyman, who is my marketing public relations coordinator, and I will tell you more about her. But you know, I always like to start the episode with a shout out of someone who has left a rating and review. Um, and I'm hopping on over to Amazon now because there's a plethora of bombshells who have left reviews about the bombshell businesswoman, how to become a bold, brave female entrepreneur. If you have not purchased that yet, you can get that on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Books a Million. I think even Walmart and Target still have it. So let's see sage wolf song thrice red books says ready to put on your red lipstick and pursue your passion ladies yes you the one in the back of the room trying to hide because as big as your dreams are you're afraid that if you step out into the spotlight they'll figure out you're a fraud yep i'm totally talking to you and this woman needs business i met amber hurdle on twitter and when i saw that she had a book for women entrepreneurs i had to go check it out i had RWA 2018 National Conference coming up. I run two businesses, at least I pretended to for the longest time, and couldn't seem to make any headway in building either. After I read the synopsis of Amber's book, I bought it. No dithering, no joke. It shot straight to the top of the to be red pile. The Bombshell Businesswoman is all about growing up as a person and a brand, building your company from the ground up, even if it's a one-woman show. Amber doesn't pull any punches. She's been at the bottom and speaks straight to the heart of the struggle that fempreneurs face every day. The book comes with several workbooks that you can download so that you're actively putting her steps into practice, and it includes a book club guide so you can build your own bombshell squad of like-minded women to read and grow side by side with. That was an amazing review. Thank you so much, Sage Wolfsong. If you're listening to this, I hope you will tweet to me so I know who you are on Twitter, what your handle is there. Y'all know I love me some Twitter. So... In announcements and other housekeeping, I definitely want you to go right now into the App Store or the Google Play Store and download the free Bombshell Business app. Yes, that is right. We have an app. That's where you can get the podcast. You can get the show notes right at your fingertips. If you're running or if you're cooking and your phone is in your hand or nearby, you don't have to go to your laptop or your computer to go to any of the links that I talk about. You just go to the app, you go to the podcast tab, and you can download it from the show notes right there. Any events or webinars that I'm doing, those are all in the app. We'll push news out to you. If it's important, we don't spam. Of course, you know that about me by now. YouTube videos, the blog posts will be on there. So all of this expert content, that the bombshell business experts are churning out like super amazing gold that will be in there. Um, all the worksheets that we talk about. So you don't have to put your email address in over and over and over again to get different worksheets. You just download the app. And all the worksheets are right there already. It's like, bam, magic. We have the chat feature. So we'll be in there chatting it up with you, talking to you about some of the issues that we are discussing in the podcast. Um, You can email me from there. You can get the Bombshell Business Quiz in there. All the experts, you can find out more about them there. All of my social media, any courses that I offer. And then, of course, you can link directly to purchase the book. All of that handy right at your fingertips, because I know that's where you exist, is um, in this little phone. That's where a relationship is budding and growing and living. So thank you for your loyalty. The whole reason why I did this is to make your bombshell journey easier. And you're loyal to me. I want to be loyal to you. That's just the bottom line. So let's get into today's episode. Today, we're going to be talking to Abby, and Abby began her world with me as an intern when she was a senior in college, and we worked on a project, a very specific project together, and I fell in love with her. She's super crazy smart. She was a 
public relations student, and she had all kinds of experience already with internships and was the news editor for her college newspaper, like president of the Public Relations Student Society. I mean, I could just go on and on. I was like, what? This this is amazing. Of course, I have a PR background, and so that obviously was important to me. And then I brought her on to continue after she graduated, and she had so much to do with the book launch. I mean, so much to do (laughs) with the book launch. There is no way that I could have done that book launch without Abby, hands down, for sure. She's super intuitive. She immediately picks up on the voice of her customers. And um, so like me, basically, she she can sound like me. and, And then she took over all social media. So Abby does the social media in terms of curating. A lot of the posts are written by her. It's all scheduled by her. Some of them, like my personal Instagram, obviously that's me. And some of them I might write and then share with her to share. But if you respond to me, that is always me responding to you. That is not Abby. That's always me. So she manages the front end and then I manage the relationship and the discussion. That's how we've worked things out. So here is her official bio. Again, she is the social media expert on the bombshell business experts team. She's a marketing and public relations coordinator for Amber Hodel Consulting. She is an expert in strategically coordinating multiple social media profiles for personal brand clients, consistently showcasing each client while maintaining a unique voice and staying on brand. And y'all know how obsessed I am with that. With a background in nonprofit leadership and public relations, she uses her expertise for good, providing branding and organizational health support to community organizations. Abby's passion to see women, people of color, and other marginalized groups succeed drives her compassionate and goal-focused approach to social media strategies that brings awareness and increases sales. And that's really the bottom line, y'all. If you're not using social media to actually get to a particular outcome, you're just really playing. Is that right, Abby? Welcome to the show. It's your first show. (laughs) (laughs) That's right. (laughs) So um, where to even begin, Abby? I just feel like maybe the, the number one thing people need to know before we dive in is that I'm a really big picture person and I can map out a social strategy for the next 10 years, but actually executing it on the reg day to day, not my jam, right? Right. I would say that (laughs) you're definitely a visionary. You're definitely a risk taker, definitely a leader, but yeah, I just get to help you execute some of those big things you have going on. That's a really nice way of saying, yeah, like nothing would ever happen, Amber, unless I made it happen. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know if that's the truth. I think you'd, you'd find a way. I think I'm just part of your team, but <laughs> but thanks. <laughs> so I, I think that's an important thing. If you can't find the wherewithal, or and, and I'm and I'm saying like I'm calling myself out here. I mean, I've and before Abby, I did all of my own social media. So I mean, it happened, but I was on the struggle bus because that takes time, and you know, I really need to be creating relationships and delivering content, and I need to be, you know, doing the things that I get paid to do, not spending all my time doing something that is not the highest value of my time. So if you are in that same position, I want you to really listen to kind of how we do things so that you can start implementing systems that work for you, but more importantly, that you can then turn over to somebody else so they can help support you and you can focus on what makes you money. So when we first got started together, I want people to see like, okay, so you start working with somebody there's the side of the business owner, which I can speak to, but then there's the side of the social media expert, or maybe you have somebody who's fresh out of college, or maybe you have somebody who is an intern, or maybe you are lucky you have somebody like Abby who just rocks your face off. I want you to come from that side. So we started working together. I kind of ish had some systems together that worked for me. What did it feel like to come on board with me? Good question. It took a minute, I think, to for me to realize that I could find my own rhythm and system working with you. But you definitely made it where you made a space for me to come in and be able to ask questions, which I think was really great that you took me along. You've taken me, honestly, still taking me along on your journey and your different risks that you're taking. But you're creating space for me to come in and say, hey, can I have some help? 
Um, and with the things that I'm not sure of, and you always follow up, <laughs> you know, you always come back and say, this is what I'm thinking. Or if you're not sure about this, here's how I can, here's what I'm thinking of how to, how to make, how I would do that, how to make it work. But something that's been really great is you've never expected me to do something that, that you wouldn't try to do yourself or you didn't know how to do. You've definitely supported me, I think, each step of the way, which has been really nice. There's some other things that I've done. It hasn't, it hasn't always been that way. We're just not met with the same support. So although there's been a lot of things going on and a lot of shifts and a lot of <laughs> maybe big risks or different things, a book, an app, things like that, <laughs> that, you know, I'd never done before. I've been able to feel confident in my abilities because you've affirmed them as well along the way. So I think both of us in some senses are taking steps to figure it out and staying curious along the way. But it's been a good partnership, I think, where I could use the word partnership and that be a genuine word to just describe how we work together. That is so true. And I think there's just a an openness and sometimes <laughs> we even just laugh and it's like, yeah. I don't know, let's see if this works. <laughs> yeah. 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 And that's honestly, that's comforting being the person who's also feeling that way to know that like, we're not going to just like float around and try not to figure it out, but like that you're coming with like in a, a, a feeling that will affirm that that's okay. You know, like yeah, we're all trying to figure it out and that's, that's part of the journey here. Well, and, and so like on the business owner side, you know, you've, you've got to take risks. I, maybe I'm probably on the, I'm on the extreme end of risk takers. I'll, I'll, you know, concede that, but everyone is going to have to take even small risks. So if you're not comfortable with not knowing, because every time you do something is the first the first time is always the first time. So unless you have somebody who has experienced exactly your business, exactly from your point of view with your exact history and your exact future, there's no way that you're going to get it exactly the right way. Cause there is not a right way. There's mm-hmm. the way that works for you. And I know I repeat that over and over again on the show is, is that, you know, you have to find your solutions, your tools, your rhythm, your flow. And and that's something we'll definitely get into. But from my perspective with Abby, on the front end, I tried to give her as much direction as I could. And I probably failed a lot. I'm not a micromanager, first of all. So there's that I'm, I'm very visionary. And I'm like, here are the tools and resources that I think that you need. Here's some direction. Here's my vision, how you get there. You know, here's some suggestions, but how you get there really doesn't matter to me as long as we accomplish this in the end. And let me know when you hit a roadblock and I'll do everything I can to clear it. Like that's my Mm -hmm. leadership style. Mm -hmm. So that's not great for everyone, but it's great Mm -hmm. for Abby because her personality needs that. She needs space to find her own way and create her own systems. And she wasn't ever scared And I think this is really important. When I first interviewed Abby, I was like, if you can't push back, we're probably not a fit. (laughs) Because (laughs) I move fast and sometimes I move too fast and I don't slow down to think about the little details of things. So Abby will come back and be like, well, okay, so if if we did this, have, you know, I'm kind of worried about this, this and this. And I'm like, oh, yeah, (laughs) totally. I Mm -hmm. didn't think about that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and so I think, you know, like when I teach Fascinate, the Fascination Advantage Assessment, if if you haven't taken that assessment, go to um, amberhurdle.com forward slash Fascinate, and I'll put that in the show notes. There's like, I'm high in passion and high in innovation. So I'm all about relationships and, and out of the box I- ideas. So to put that really plainly, I like to socialize, and <laughs> hang out. And change, like, let's just change things. Let's try new things. And, but I'm very low and alert, whereas Abby is high in passion and high and alert. So I could look at her and be like, oh, killjoy, she knocks down my ideas or she's always, <laughs> and she doesn't always, I'm, I'm being overly, I'm being exaggerative, but you know, she, she's always asked, she's always second guessing me. I could look at it that way, or I could look at like, heck yeah, Abby has alert. She's kind of like, she's going to figure out the collateral damage I'm about to do with all of my change. Right. So I think it's really important that your yin and yang, your ebb and flow with whoever you're working on with social media, that you have that down. 
So, Mm -hmm. so as we do these things, like, you know, launch a book and get it into Barnes and Noble and, you know, go on a freaking national book tour, like, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, (laughs) I kind of did. Like, I know PR, you know, PR, like we know, Mm -hmm. we had the tools. I think that's Mm -hmm. important. We had the tools, but we just had never applied the tools on on that particular project. Right. So how did you handle that? Like, I don't even remember what even happened because I was so in the trenches. How did you handle Mm -hmm. like going, hmm, book tour? How do we promote this? Or, hmm, Amber's launching a book. How do we promote this? Um, For me, I have to always try to just stay curious and not get to a point where the big thing feels overwhelming or too far, like too big of a thing, too far away from anything I've done. And so for me, keeping a mindset of staying curious gets me to do some research to to look around and how other people have done that. But then thinking about small tasks, like once I've done, figured out where we're going, thinking of the small tasks that it takes to get there, just take something that's really overwhelming or could feel that way and boiling it down to something that I can do. I love checklists. So then being able to be like, great, we did that check <laughs> or we took a step in the right direction and being able to to kind of check that off as we go just to feel like there's some victories along the way I think that was definitely a big thing for me also feeling like you I think you do a really great job of affirming me along the way and I think I've said that already but it's really a big deal I think when you're a leader and you're asking of your team to do things that are outside of their comfort zone affirming them along the way and communicating that you trust them, even in some of the uncertainty of a new project is a really big step. And I think that you gave me that encouragement that I needed to be able to, in my own mind, take something that seemed very overwhelming or big um, and kind of boil that down to something that I felt confident in my abilities to, to take on in some capacity as part of the team. Yeah. As a business owner, I love that. Be curious, staying curious that, that we could, man, could we just not apply that across life? <laughs> right. Such a greater place. Uh-huh. <laughs> but just sticking to business, um, being curious is important and allowing your team to be curious is also very important. But the perfectionism too, especially when you are exploring and testing and you've never done something before, like you, you, there's just a lot of needing to let go. And something mm-hmm. that I've always said, because of course I've always been, my whole career has been around communication and engagement. So everything's on a deadline. You've got communication plans, you have event plans, you know, it's, everything's a campaign. And so that's been my whole life. And what I've learned is like, things are going to go wrong all the time <laughs> it's just <laughs> the nature of life you know uh-huh. and sometimes you make mistakes and you learn from them if you don't learn from them then that's a problem but it's like oh okay well, I'll do that differently next time mm-hmm. but, but I think the one thing that I say over and over again is like we're not saving babies uh-huh like so true <laughs> we're we're like a you know a consulting firm like a single <laughs> person consulting firm mm-hmm. like this like at the end of the day <laughs> How bad could it really be? Mm -hmm. And I think that safe place is, it's not just, you know, I hope that it gives you confidence and I hope that it gives you a safe place to fail. I mean, I'm that way with my own children. Like if home's not a safe place to fail, then how are they going to survive in the world? Mm -hmm. But for me, it it allows me to let go and and just kind of like let you do your thing because at the end of the day, if if it's a mistake, then we learn from it. Like Mm -hmm. it's, it's better than me a doing it b probably getting it wrong anyways and then having to deal with the mistake at least if i pass something off and you make a mistake and and she does not this is not like a routine (laughs) thing but i'm saying this is a fear that i know well they won't do it like me well Mm -hmm. no they're not they'll actually probably do it better than you because they can actually put their time and attention Mm -hmm. their talents on it so there's that but just say somebody makes a mistake on your team and it's not just the way that you do it being able to collaborate for a solution is a whole lot faster than it all being on your plate. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And that reminds me of the importance of evaluating, which I think we do along the way often is to see what things are working and what's not. And if you're not taking that time to evaluate, even in small ways, then it's, you might not catch some of those smaller mistakes that are happening too. And, you know, creating a time or a point where you can, do something really powerful in that relationship you have with your employees or vendors or whoever you're working with. Yeah. And so 
<clears throat> for me, and I'm sorry, everybody, I'm probably clearing my throat this whole this whole episode. I'm just going to have to call it out because I don't know if I'm going to be able to edit all this out. <laughs> Um, still recovering from <laughs> stupid cold. You're probably listening to this like in November or something. Um, and they're like, she's been sick for months now. Um, <laughs> this is called batching your tasks. You get a lot of episodes done. You should write all your blog posts at once and then schedule them. And then you're not stressed out about it every single week. So mm-hmm. um, preach. Okay. Yes. Um, <laughs> preach a girl. <laughs> so what we do when, when she talks about making shifts is first of all, we, we communicate pretty darn regularly throughout the week. But when I see something, it's like, oh, I, hmm, I didn't even think about that. I'll like loop her in and then vice versa. If she starts seeing a pattern or, you know, I'm doing this and it's really not working. You know, do you have any ideas on how we could do this differently? We do that in the moment. But then we also pretty routinely or like before a big launch, we sit down for an hour, two hours and and really map out like the long game. So what what is that like for you on your end? What does that do for you? Whenever we sit down and have those those meetings, typically right away, I feel slightly overwhelmed <laughs> um, just because I'm not, like thrown full into bombshell world, which is a cool place. The bombshell biz world is awesome, but it takes a minute sometimes to get situated in that for me. But it's also really helpful because I like to know where I'm going. <laughs> I like to know what the purpose is, you know, why we're taking, why Amber's decided to take this risk in her business, you know, why, why we're doing anything at all, honestly. And so when she sits down with me and is able to be like, okay, this is what the next three months of your life is going to be like. <laughs> it's like super helpful because it lets me know like how she was just, we were just talking about bucketing our time it helps me know, okay, like this is what I need to do. I can work things into my own schedule, my own system to know where, just knowing where we're going, what I need to do on my end to make sure we get there. So it's really helpful to know, to know what's, what's expected of me and being able to look literally three, at least three months in advance is like really great to know what the next quarter is going to, going to hold. Yeah. It's a little overwhelming just because again, a lot is new, but also it also brings like a, a level of comfort to be able to not feel like I'm totally stepping into the unknown the moment it happens. <laughs> like, like we're, I've got some time to, to get there and to know where we're going. It also lets us like, we have a real content calendar and like a real mm-hmm. schedule and a real plan. And that's so good. <laughs> like a lot of just in the nonprofit world where I have some the majority of my experience, a lot of the time we're flying by the seat of our pants and that's, that's not always terrible. You know, you have to shift your focus as you go, but being able to know, or at least have a general idea of where we're going and having goals and steps to take to get there. That's so important for having a plan and a vision. Yeah. So, so it's actually really good to be able to sit down as well, face to face with Amber and just talk it out. Cause we're not always working in the same often we're not working in the same building and same state now, which is great, yeah. but <laughs> same, the same County. Yeah. We're fine. Um, same county. <laughs> woo, super close now. Yeah. But it's always good to, it's always fun, you know, to sit and see, to see how you work. Cause we have a lot of similarities, Amber, but I think in some ways too, we, are, we do have differences Oh yeah, in our, our work eth- or not our ethic, but our work style, our I guess. Work style is totally uh-huh. different. Definitely. So it's cool to see that as well. See how you're flourishing as an entrepreneur. Well, so, and so let me just like put out baseline. Anybody who works with me probably starts out baseline overwhelmed. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> <laughs> the tsunami in my head is just, it's, it's always there and it's always mm-hmm. been there. It will always be there. And so my energy and, and just my, I just, I, if there is a, a psychological diagnosis for people who just always like to do hard things. I need, I need that diagnosis. So if you know that right in, let me know um, because I do. And it's, it's almost like a sickness, um, but a fun one for me, but for everybody else, it's like, I know I'm very aware of the fact that like, I've got this crazy big vision that I'm trying to accomplish and dialing that in and being like, okay, this is why we're doing this. This is the outcome that I'm hoping for. 
And, you know, here are the big picture steps that I think we need to take to get there. Let's fill in the details now. Like, that's kind of how I approach things. And so when you get sucked into that vortex, like, I can't even imagine what that feels like. (laughs) Well, I can because I've worked in I've worked in industries where like I get sucked. I got sucked into things and I'm like, I don't even know what to do with my hands. Like you just (laughs) you're frozen. Uh Um, And then you're when you do such a great job of this, too. It's like, okay, I'm going to break this down. Like what's realistic? You know, what's the first step? Let's get you to the first step down. And so really be conscious of how you operate and then schedule wise too. So Abby and I, she used to live in Kentucky and I lived here. I think we had a couple face-to-face meetings, Mm -hmm. um, you know, just to, to get ahead of things, especially around the book launch time. And then there's times where I've mapped some stuff out with her and then we did nothing with it because it was like, (laughs) oh. Once again, Amber bit off way more than she could actually chew. So knowing that, and I think Abby shows me a lot of grace in those areas. Um, and and then I hope that I have a strong level of accountability that, okay, some things I'm just going to have to nix. And that I don't think that happen, happens a ton, but it, it mm-hmm. can. But, you know, if I don't fulfill my end of what I have to do, then Abby can't do her job. And so I'm motivated by that even more than I'm motivated delivering to you all because Abby is committed to helping me be successful. So if she's not getting what she needs, then you'll never get what you need as a listener, reader, audience member, you know, bombshell, you know, student, whatever. Um, So that's really important. And then the other thing I want to point out is Abby is super smart, just if you haven't caught on yet. And she is actually in graduate school at Vanderbilt University. (laughs) I don't know if you know a lot about Vanderbilt, but it's hard. It's really hard. It's hard to get into. And it's it's a tough, it's a tough school. And so my commitment to her immediately was I, no matter what you think you can handle, I'm not going to give you anything that's super time sensitive Mm -hmm. because I'm not going to add that additional stress to a, a newly married, going to grad school. And then also she now has a puppy. And so do I. So more to kibitz about. Um, So there's just all these responsibilities. And I could be like a mean person and be like, nope, you got to get this done by this time. And, you know, and and try to give her things that like, oh, this has to get done today or, you know, my hair is going to light on fire. But how conducive is that going to be for the long game? Mm-hmm. As opposed to just giving you what I know you can handle and I know you're going to get done. And then I don't have to worry about that at all. And no balls get dropped. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, totally. There's a lot of respect for me, <laughs> for me as a person, not just me as your employee, which is really amazing to work for somebody like that. You know, that's why that's why we're still together <laughs> on my end, because you respect me as a human, which is fabulous. Well, <laughs> I are a very special person on so many levels, but <laughs> thanks. You know, I just think in any working relationship, being very aware of how are we going to work together and and what's that rhythm going to be like, not just for the person's position, but as you work together, what does that look like? And there's more, there's definitely more room for growth in that area, I think, for us. And we're trying to nail some of that down. It's more on my end of being able to be nailed down with travel and all that (laughs) kind of stuff. But, you know, so far, so good. You have a mantra a mantra. And, mm-hmm. um, and I, I think this, like, this is definitely a tweetable. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Yeah, mantra? sure. So this summer I was um, doing some work with a nonprofit in Nashville that works with people experiencing homelessness and they live by this mantra, blessed are the flexible for they will not be bent out of shape. And that like blew my mind. <laughs> Isn't it so good? Blessed are the flexible for they will not be bent out of shape. Yeah. Um, yeah, so live by that. that <laughs> live by that. You'll be seeing that all over social media because <laughs> that is the best. So like mm-hmm. what does that mean to you as you're working on social? Mm-hmm. So things that don't, people don't always make deadline. There's things that just pop up that need to happen or things that are scheduled that, okay, the link for some reason didn't work or oops, I had a typo or, you know, something something happens. It's just life. Um, and knowing that like, okay, we can, we can be flexible. We can take a step back and, and not let it like totally ruin 
my moment, you know, or my day or whatever, because you're not going to be bent out of shape. You're not going to, you're not going to let a small thing or whatever it is, even if it's a big thing, like totally derail where you're going. You just accept it as it is. And you, you shift, you take the, you you move. (laughs) And then honestly, you're blessed for that in the sense of your attitude or your mood or your interactions or relationships with others around you, because you didn't totally lose your stuff (laughs) over a deadline, you know, which obviously meet your deadlines. Okay. As a news, former news editor, you meet your deadline, Yeah, (laughs) But, but just don't lose your, lose your stuff over everything, you know? Yeah. I don't know. What does it mean to you, Amber? Um, well, I just think that, you know, speed is king in today's Mm -hmm. business world. And so as much as I would like to have everything go perfectly according to plan, the reality is that things change before you can develop a plan to accommodate that change. And you, and there are times, you know, that I always say, control the controllables because the uncontrollables are coming. And mm-hmm. so if you have a plan and you work the plan and then something goes off, then it's not nearly as bad than dealing with the chaos and then not really having a plan in place, period. But when things don't go according to plan, just being okay with it. And I'm not mm-hmm. saying like, I know I have a lot of type A's. I'm a type A. You're a type A. Like mm-hmm. That bombshell world is like super type A. And and so it's easy for us to get discouraged. It's easy for us to be like, well, then I'm not going to do that again because that was too hard or it didn't work instead of just trying it a different way. Um, so I think that flexibility, I kind of like, I think of yoga, right? <laughs> so everybody has their flow. Like my downward dog it might not be as good as your downward dog. And I might have to modify it because that's the way that I can do it and it be valuable to my health. But if I, if I push too hard, then now I'm damaging myself. And so it's all about, it's finding your flow, finding your flexibility, finding where a good space for you is headspace. And then also being agile. I think the people who are agile are the people who are going to win because you don't have like some preconceived idea of like, this is perfection. And if it's not this, then I'm not doing it. Mm -hmm. So totally. Um, Okay, so let's talk about workflow because, I mean, we've talked kind of big picture about how we work together and that kind of stuff, but let's get a little more nitty gritty about the process of how we create the content and then how do we schedule it and then like, what's that flow like? Sure. Do you want to talk specifically about the experts or just in general? We could talk about, yeah, so that's, you know, we have the Bombshell Business Experts, so now we have a bunch of people who are writing and and contributing and then we're interviewing the same people instead of, you know, getting guests who asked to be on the show and, you know, they apply and all that kind of stuff. Um, So we have kind of more of a contained environment, but now a more chaotic environment because we have (laughs) so many people involved in what used to just be me and Abby. Mm -hmm. So let's, yeah, let's start there. Sure. So it's really a collaborative thing, at least coming up with different content. I guess we have two buckets. One would be two like major buckets. We have lots of buckets, but two huge buckets. One thinking of like all the content that's going to fill to fill all this all the time slots during the day with content other than just what the bombshell business experts are putting out because that's a new thing. Um, so we bucket the type of content we use or think of different categories. And so We find lots of evergreen things that can go in there, um, like quotes or articles from other people or questions and fill in the blanks, things like that. And that's where when I bucket my time, I sit down and I go through adding to all of that as much as I can at once. And along the way, I'm every so often going back and refreshing things. So that's one side of it, making sure we have enough time. just like different content there. So you don't see the same things over and over also. And there we oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, let me put a time out there because for, for those who aren't familiar with our social media, maybe just going to Twitter because that has the most that goes out mm-hmm. today would be a good way for you to see when she says we bucket, we make buckets for different content. So we have a bucket that is like inspirational quotes or, you know, funny sayings or, you know, things like that. And so we know that we need like, I'm just grabbing numbers here, a hundred 
of quotes. And then sometimes Abby might be like, hey, Amber, I need some more biz tips. And so Mm -hmm. I'll put together some biz tips and then, you know, send those over to her and we might make graphics for them or maybe we don't. And then she does a great job of coming up with fill in the blanks. Like today is a great day because blank period. And we've tested doing it without a graphic and we've tested doing it with a graphic. And what kind of engagement do we get on that? And so when we're creating like other people's content, our content, I know that you've been listening. Most of my audience members usually go all the way back and listen all the way through. So you've heard other social media experts talk about, you know, you can't just promote yourself all the time. Like you Mm -hmm. have to, (laughs) you have to include other things. And so that's overwhelming when you look at it like, okay, if I'm supposed to be tweeting 10 times a day, what is that? Yeah. If you look at it as, okay, I've got all these different buckets and I just need to fill my buckets and then I can schedule these buckets in very specific times. Now you've kind of got like a matrix of content that you're just constantly filling. So, sorry, I just wanted to put no, a little time out on that and then mm-hmm. carry on. Okay. Yeah, so that's really helpful to think what Amber's saying to give you some more context there. But yeah, having those buckets that just kind of spill over into the the allotted time um, through a scheduling tool we use called Smarter Q. It just lets you create a calendar there and it'll, it'll post the things for you automatically, your different posts. So making sure that all the content there is ready to go beforehand, I can do it um, when I have time to sit down and get through a lot of that and then know that um, until for the next month or however long I've scheduled it out, I don't have to deal with, I don't have to look back at it or look back to schedule new things, but obviously look over actual, um, the actual posts once they're published on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to see how they're doing. If there's any, you know, something that didn't, that the link didn't go through correctly or the wrong graphic was used or something like that. Just as you get into the flow of staring at a computer for six hours, (laughs) you can kind of lose track of things. So that's one thing though. The other new challenge that we've um, been trying to create a system that works for us with is the bombshell business experts um, because there's, I think, 10 or 12 of us, 12, I think. And each person is turning in three blog posts. They're doing a podcast episode. And so that alone with the blog posts is like 36 different (laughs) posts, which also need like for Twitter, they need three posts written for like pretty right away. They for one for when it's first published and in case you miss it. And then another post that can cycle through the queue. And then Instagram needs a post and Facebook needs it to at least two or three posts. So for each blog itself, now you have seven yeah. <laughs> different social posts for it and you put it online on WordPress and found, and, you know, there's lots of steps. And so right away I sat down and tried to think what, what is going to work for me? Um, so I just created or printed off blank calendars so that this was its own separate thing. This wasn't mixed up with everything else, literally on a piece of paper, just for November or whatever month, September. I just printed off, it's empty. And then I went through and filled it in myself with what day people were going to be, their their post was going to be published, whatever that is, a blog or a podcast. And then with each of those, I would just create my own little system and symbols to know for each, like for Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to be able to check off as I went to make sure, um, okay, did I, first, did I put it on WordPress and get all of that together with the feature image and, you know, checking all the boxes that have to happen there. So when I'd make sure I did that, I was able to, to cross it off on my calendar. And then with the three little symbols I created to align with each social post, once I did that, I could cross that off just to make sure you know, I had done each of that because with each post, when there's like 12 different steps and some that might be exaggerating, but it feels like that might might not be, you might not (laughs) be exaggerating. (laughs) (laughs) But for me, if I don't have a system as I'm like, okay, maybe having to get up to take the dog out and then coming back or getting a phone call or whatever's happening along the way, it's really easy to lose track of that. Or if I need to close my eyes for a minute because I'm staring at the computer, it's easy to lose track along the way or you know, if you have only so much time and all of a sudden you're having to finish working on a project in the middle of something, being able to track that along the way, one, keeps you consistent, makes sure no balls are dropped. But also it's, for me, it feels amazing to be like, check, <laughs> one more thing, <laughs> one more thing done. So I've had to create that 
that rhythm for me. And it took a minute because I was getting overwhelmed by all the tabs opened on my computer. Yeah. <laughs> all of the, um, having like my personal calendar and then the calendar on some of the, the tools we use online. And then, you know, having 28 different calendars, but when sometimes things can get really overlapped on your calendar, if you use like Google calendar yeah, or whatever, you can't even see yeah. what's going on in the day. Right. So for me, just being able to clarify and simplify it pretty like onto one thing with one paper rather than having, you know, 12 different things. It was really helpful for me. And, and um, that's funny. I had no idea that you had done that Yeah, because I, <laughs> I had printed out, you know, blank calendars too. And then I finally was like, well, I don't want to have to keep up with all of these. So I have a paper, I mean, not a paper, like a, just like a 2018 to 2019 planner, like a, a mm-hmm. weekly monthly planner. And so I plot out, you know, all of the experts and, when are we going to publish their podcast episode? And then where are we going to, it's like a Jenga game. Yes. It's completely Jenga. So uh-huh. you don't want to, you know, have like Mary's podcast episode on Wednesday and then her blog post on Thursday, unless it needs to be because we make reference of something or whatever. But for the most part, you want to spread everybody out and and you don't want to be heavy on one topic all bunked together Mm -hmm. Um, and then you also we have a we have a quarterly call with a video conference call with our experts to just make sure everybody's on the same page with a theme and that we're all delivering a similar value to Mm -hmm. to our audience and so we know what they're going to be contributing but then the deadline hasn't even gotten there for them to turn it in but we have to know like where to plug and play things before they even turn it in. So Uh this whole Jenga game is like hysterical. And then we put it into, we use Asana. So Mm -hmm. we communicate with everybody on Slack, which I I was just like, we're going to have, we can't do this in email. I can't talk to 12 people in email. (laughs) We cannot do reply all, like I will have a nervous breakdown. So Mm -mm. everything that the, the, the experts communicate happens in Slack we have our quarterly meeting, we use Zoom, and then um, we put the calendar, we put all the deadlines in Asana, which is a project management software, which can be viewed as a calendar, and then mm-hmm. we plot out the, our content in Asana. And so Abby and I both have one place that we can go to where we know all of, you know, in theory, if 100% of it is perfect, where, where the content calendar is. And sometimes we have to adjust things because of you know, things that are happening with our experts and, you know, their lives or whatever, but for the most part is, is pretty accurate. And so that's kind of baseline. And then there's a couple other things that you said I wanted to touch on. I'm sure some bombshells and and PS y'all, I know we're going way over on this episode, but (laughs) I, I just feel like this is such a hot topic that I want you to really get behind the scenes on it. She said, I have to make a different, different post. I have to make like three posts for Twitter and a, a couple posts for Facebook and something for Instagram. And, and I'm sure you're like, well, why don't you just make one post and put it in Hootsuite? Here's the reality. We are not going to all the trouble that we're going through to create this like super high value content for you to then half, you know what, promoting it. The reality is, is how you promote something on Facebook is different than how you promote it on Instagram. And it's different than how you promote it on Twitter. And you can't just tweet it out one time and be like, I hope all the eyeballs that will mm-hmm. ever see this piece of content saw it on that one tweet. Like, uh-uh. That's a waste of your time if you just do it once, honestly. Exactly. So we, our system is we, we promote it the day of, and then later on in the day we do an in case you missed it post. And we literally will put I-C-Y-M-I in case mm-hmm. you missed it. Um, we'll promote it again and then we'll do it one or two more times over the next couple of days. Yes, we're promoting other content too, but that's, you might have missed it yesterday. We're not wasting any bullets here. We're, we want to make sure that if we've done all this work, that eyeballs get on it and we can actually help people, which is kind of the whole idea. Like we're not trying to hide, we're not hiding what we're doing. We're not going to have to do anything. So Mm-mm. if you're just starting out in social media, this might all feel very overwhelming to you. If you do one blog post a week, we do like a bajillion. If you do one blog post a week, then I would just encourage you to that week come up with two or three different ways that you can promote it. You know, don't make it the same exact post. 
make it a little bit different, highlight a different piece of information maybe, or a different problem that it solves than you promoted the first time. But that week, you should also be promoting your pot, your for last week. And then maybe you give a teaser of the blog post that you're going to do the next week. Like, hey, I hope you're ready for next week's blog post. Like everything is, it's a continuum. And then um, Abby mentioned that we use SmarterQ and I call that, what do I call it? The recycling bin? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because smarter queue, like you put it in and you have to be careful with Twitter because Twitter won't let you tweet the same thing twice. That's just mm-hmm. a, it's a new thing as of this year with Twitter. But with like Facebook and y'all probably can tell when we're starting to get crusty with our content, <laughs> which is when we meet, we're like, I think I've seen that one about 10 yeah. times. I think that's <laughs> a little crusty. About rotation. <laughs> but smarter queue will just go all the way back through the queue. And it'll just keep reposting things if you set up your buckets and you set up your calendar and your times. And and Laura was on here with Meet Edgar and she kind of explained this. So go back and listen to that episode. Meet Edgar is another tool that's a lot like Smarter Q. And and I won't get into why we use Smarter Q over Meet Edgar. They're both fabulous. So um, that's another tool you could consider too. What else? Is there anything else that we need to let people know about? Maybe a shout out, not a shout out, but a mention of the images you use on, um, if you want to boost things on Facebook. Oh yeah. They, that was like, we, I think we knew this. We just didn't, with the other things going on, we overlooked it, but the feature image that you use for things, you're, the image you use for things you want to boost on Facebook can only have a certain amount of text. So we'll need to just use like, different types of images that don't have as much text if you want to be able to boost things you know so you can get in front of more eyes with all the different algorithms and things that are control who sees what on facebook yeah so So if you're going to run an ad and of any sort on instagram or facebook they're really big on it mainly being a picture and then whatever your content is is are are the words that you use. And we were doing a lot of words as the image because it just made sense and it looked pretty. (laughs) (laughs) And and we knew this and I used to not do as much Facebook advertising, but again, just out of respect for the fact that we have these amazing experts and they're all taking their time to add value to you. And I want to be sure that that value is well received. And so I'm I'm doing a lot more advertising. And and then I was like, oh, snap, I can't boost that Mm -hmm. because there's too much text. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We knew this. Yeah. And and I take full responsibility because I'm the one that started creating the images and then she ran (laughs) with it. So it's totally my fault. Uh, Not that we place blame in in our world at all. But I'm just saying, you know, sometimes, sometimes, you know, but then you just forget or you get busy, yeah. you get, you know, that, that's one of those things where going back to the whole, be flexible, make small mm-hmm. shifts, you know, we didn't lose our minds over it. We just started creating blog posts with different images now. Yeah. I mean, yes, <laughs> easy as that. Yep. <laughs> oh, yep. Pivot again. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess to wrap up, if you had like one major piece of advice that you could give to a business owner working with a social media manager, what would that be? Just don't try to control. Don't micromanage. (laughs) Number one thing, do not try to micromanage the people you're working with. Realize that you have different, different work styles and that's okay. And trust that they are using their time in the right, you know, in a, in a, the right way in a trustworthy way when they're working with you. You know, give them some freedom to 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 be themselves in the work they're doing, um, and they'll do a better job. That's what I've come to realize when working with you in this way. Yeah, and I, I, you know, it's funny because I'm pretty much the same thing. If I was to give a great piece of advice to a business owner working with social media manager, it's to it's to create space. Let that mm-hmm. person, you know, be as analytical or be as creative as they need to be. And then where where they feel like, OK, I need backup on the creative side or the analytical side, then close the gap for them. So it's really about the dance is about allowing your social media manager to take the lead and then to be there or not as as needed. Mm-hmm. You know, really flow. I think flow is a good word. Overall. Yeah, totally. I think so too. 
So um, I hope that was valuable. Um, we pulled the curtain way back. We probably gave more details than maybe some of you <laughs> wanted and then not enough for others of you. So if you have any questions, you know, hit us up on the chat wall in the Bombshell Business app and we'll jump in there and answer those for you. But social media is, it can be an overwhelming and daunting task. And there's so many times where I'll like text Abby and be like, I hate social media. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's a regular thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just want to be in a room with people and talk. Like, this mm-hmm. is, you know, this just it could be overwhelming. So, um, yeah. I'm I'm right there with you, bombshell, Abby. Thank you so much for being honest yes. and on the show, and also for being so valuable to, yeah. to me. Thanks for having me. Thanks for taking me on your journey. Yeah. <laughs> I've learned so much, honestly. <laughs> Thank you. You've enlightened me. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> All right, bombshells. So you know what to do. Um, check out the show notes either at amberhurdle.com forward slash podcast with an S or in the podcast tab in your app, the Bombshell Business app, which is available in the App Store and on Google Play. And then we'll make sure that all the links are in the show notes so you can get right to all the good juicy stuff that we talked about today. And we will see you on the next episode. Thanks for listening to the Bombshell Business Podcast. Visit AmberHurdle.com for more resources like show notes and check out the BombshellBusinessWoman.com to grab my book and download the free bonuses.